The Uncanny Counter, Season 2 Episode 7 Recap and Review Picking them off one by one Episode 7 of Uncanny Counter Season 2 picks up after the unthinkable has happened. Juice Sock has killed CEO Park and sucked out his essence. The evil spirit inside him is way more powerful than before, prompting Moon and Juice Sock to begin trading blows. The fight spills outside the apartment complex, where Juice Sock shows just how powerful he is now. He easily thwarts Moon's blows and trades some of his own. The pair continue to go back and forth, with Moon managing to capture some of the flashes to the prison scene involving Pil Guang in the process. Specifically, the chat where Pil Guang said Beck Du construction was to blame and not just CEO Park. Naturally, Pil Guang shows up on the ground and taunts Moon when the latter knocks out Ju Sok, pointing out that this guy is his masterpiece. However, this whole thing is a big distraction as Jelly manages to blindside Hana inside in a bid to best her and suck out her essence. Thankfully, the rest of the counters and Moon arrive just in time to stop that from happening. However, Hana is knocked out and in a rough way. Pil Guang brings Ju Sok to his hideout and speaks directly to the evil spirit, who's hungry to consume more spirits. The thing is, if Pil Guang and Ju Sok's evil spirits are to combine, they'd become a complete evil spirit, and cause all sorts of untold chaos. Ju Sok is almost too far gone right now to reason with, but Pil Guang uses this to rile him up further when he regains consciousness. He points out that he's not the bad guy here, given he wants Ju Sok to get his revenge. And the next target is President Lee Chung Jae of Bikdo. Jelly shows up at the prison, using her skills to head in through the front door posing as an attorney. She speaks to Wong and kills him outright. Pil Guang arrives to check up on her progress but she's not happy. The pair eventually part ways, with Jelly's spiked glove still stinging the side of Pil Guang's face after their encounter. Meanwhile, Hana wakes up from her slumber and is back on the mend. The only one not there is Mo Tak, who's actually off doing undercover work with Jack Bong. He hooks him up with a wire and sends him into Bekdu construction. There, he obtains crucial evidence to use against them, coming in the form of various higher-ups at Bekdu. President Lee is among them. The counters decide they need to try and stop Bekdu from scamming anyone else, while simultaneously preventing Ju Sok from killing the men. They show up at the badminton club just in time, where the gangsters try to hustle the residents out of their homes, forcing them to accept the settlement amounts. The counters are having none of that though and they stand up for the righteous, clearing the residents out before besting all the goons. The whole group lend their skills, eventually ending with Moon besting the entire group. However, none have any memory of Chung Jae so they get get much from them. When Du Hui rocks up and sees all the counters together, the group end up going for lunch. There, they question Du Hui regarding what he likes about Hana and he replies that she's kind. That, of course, caused the whole place to erupt with laughter. Except with Jack Bong, as he's infatuated with Hana and very clearly jealous. After lunch, the pair have some alone time and Du Hui seems to fall deeper for her. Jelly happens to be watching all of this take place from afar, bitterly retorting that it must be nice to have someone to share memories with. Mei Ok decides to help Jay Yul out with a hearty meal. The way she sees it, if she fills him up, it will stop him committing too many crimes. However, on his way out and back home, one of Chung Jay's subordinates shows up at his place, believing that he's being tailed by cops. He suddenly grabs a wire and tells Jay Yul he's lost his last chance. As he's choked out, Mei Ok manages to arrive just in time, knocks out the goon and heals Jay Yul. The goon's phone rings after he's been knocked out, with someone called Pill One ringing. This is President Lee Chung Jay's man, and he's calling for a checkup on behalf of his boss. The counters use this audio footage to gain an advantage, with them hearing that Chung Jay is an avid golfer. There are three golf clubs in the area but Ju Sok is already on the hunt, making things a lot more difficult. The hospital is where Ju Sok is hunting, and the counters arrive too late to save one of Chung Jay's men. He's bleeding from the eyes and knocked out, thanks to our evil spirit. Hana decides to end things with Du Hui. She meets him late at night and walks away after breaking his heart. However, Jelly shows up and holds him hostage. She gets the jump on Hana too, hitting her in the eyes with her spiked knuckles. Just as Hana tries to feel her way to stopping Jelly, the evil spirit stabs Du Hui and looks set to hit the killing blow. Hana steps up, as Du Hui is knocked out and passes out on the ground, promising this is the end for her now. The episode review. Another episode rolls round and another reminder that Jack Bong is the most useless member of this team. Whips aside though, the drama and action is just starting to heat up now. We know that Pil Guang and Ju Sok are ready to strike down the members of Bekdu construction, and seeing more of the past, specifically with Minji being spat on and humiliated like that, explains somewhat just how much rage Ju Sok is carrying with him. 
The subplot with Du Hui finally serves a purpose at the end too, with us seeing Jelly using the guy as a distraction and tool to get the better of Hana. That's evident to see as the pair are now fighting with everything they have. With the show nearing its conclusio, I'd imagine Jelly will be beaten here but it's unclear whether Du Hui will make it out of this alive or not.